welcome to the assam history lectures we are beginning today with the modern assam history this is the part 1 of the class series as we have already discussed the assam history can be divided into five segments we have already covered the prehistoric period the ancient period and the medieval period so today we will begin the modern assam history from 1826 that is the treaty of yandabu to 1947 indian independence so this period is known as the modern assam history now the modern assam history can again be divided into further parts like the british annexation in assam then the colonial rule begins then colonial rule again can be subdivided into the bengal presidency the chief commissioner's province the eastern bengal and assam under lieutenant governor assam legislative council diarchy and the assam legislative assembly and we will come to know that many issues and many legacies of the modern assam history still continues in the political in the socio political scenario of assam so right at the beginning we have studied that after the treaty of yandabu the people of assam welcomed the british with open arms because the british were seen as saviors the assamese had already suffered more than enough on the account of the barbarism that was uh, imbibed on them by the burmese invasion the muhammad rebellion and the downfall of the ahom kingdom the pike system which was a very uh, administrative administrative uh, supported the british the ahom system the pike system was filled with non assamese which did not go down well with the people especially the intellectuals thus uh, various plans were drawn to overthrow the british and re establish the ahom rule now coming to the british annexation of assam so as we know in 1824 the first anglo burmese war broke out the british attacked the burmese garrison in assam and by 1825 the burmese were expelled from assam so as per the treaty of yandabu the burmese monarch bagidao renounced all claims on assam and after the treaty the british became the masters of brahmaputra valley and they began to consolidate their rules in the entire assam or the northeast of india and at that time the nearly the entire northeast is assam itself in 1830 the kosari king govinda chandra was assassinated so seizing this opportunity the british annexed the kosari kingdom in 1832 so after the treaty of yandabu the british not only annexed the ahom kingdom but also tried to uh, annex the neighboring kingdoms and slowly they consolidated their rule in the entire northeast or the entire assam in 1833 the ahom prince purandar singh was made a titular ruler in upper assam but owing to mismanagement and failure to pay regular revenue the british authorities decided to remove him and finally annex the ahom kingdom under the british empire then again in 1835 the kingdom of joyantia was annexed in 1842 the region of motok and hodia was also annexed by british authorities and in 1854 the north kasar hill district under tularam senapati's administration was also annexed into the british empire so thereby since the treaty of yandabu in 1826 it can be seen that the british completed their conquest and consolidation of their rule in assam by occupying the neighboring kingdoms of the ahom kingdom now coming to the bengal presidency from 1826 to 1873 so assam was included as a part of the bengal presidency the annexation of upper assam is attributed to the successful manufacture of tea in 1837 and 
the beginning of the Assam Company in 1889. So, the annexation of Assam was also attributed to the successful manufacture of tea in 1887 and the beginning of the Assam Company in 1839. So, then the British under the wasteland rules of 1838, it became nearly impossible for natives to start plantations. So after the liberalization of the rules in 1854, there was a land rush. Land rush to occupy the lands in Assam to start the tea plantations. Chinese stuff that was imported earlier for the cultivation of tea left Assam in 1843. And there was a vacuum or a vacancy which was left for the tea laborers. And then the tea plantations came to be tended by local, local labor solely, mainly by those belonging to the Kosari group. Now from 1859, so this is very important, from 1859 onwards, Central Indian labor was imported for the tea, transplant, tea, tea plantations and this labor based on an unbreakable contract led to a difficult condition for this labor group. So this is now in modern day, which we call the tea tribes in Assam. So the immigration of tea tribes in Assam began around 1850s. The conditions in which they were transported to Assam were very horrific and the colonial government already had monopoly over the opium trade. So these contexts are very important because as we will study in our later classes that this monopoly over the opium trade and the horrific conditions of the laborers and the farmers communities led to various revolts in the in that period so we will come to that in our subsequent classes now as i have mentioned due to the policies of the british there were resistance against the british and the first notable revolt against the british was led by Hananjoy Borguhai and Gumdor Kuor in 1828, a revolt which did not meet with much success. Again, in 1830, Hananjoy Borguhai, Piolifukon, and Zura Medhi rose in revolt and they were sentenced to death. In the Indian Rebellion of 1857, famous the marchers uh, of Assam were Moniram Dewan and Pioli Borua, who were executed for their roles in the rebellion. So this are important points in prelims and mains. These questions can be asked in the Indian Rebellion of 1857. The two martyrs of Assam were the Moniram Dewan and Pioli Borua. In 1861, peasants of Nogao gathered at Kulaguri for a rice mill, that is People's Assembly, to protest against taxes on betel nut and pan. So as the Assamese community has the uh, habit of using the pan tamul so there were taxes imposed on the betel nut and pan and one british officer got into a quarrel with the peasants and was killed after which the protests were violently suppressed now gomdhar kuor was sentenced to seven years in prison and dhananjoy boragohai who was given orders to be hanged fled to motok kingdom there Dhananjoy Borogohai, together with his sons Horokanto and Horonat, son-in-law Zeuram Dualia Borua, Pioli Borfukon, Rupchon, and many others secretly set up a plan to attack Rongpur. But before they could execute the plan, Sadiakwa Guhai informed the British of their plans because he wanted to prove his loyalty to the British. Then Pioli Borfukon, Zeuram Dualia Borua were hanged into to death in 1830 and the rest were expelled from the country. So Pioli Borfukon, the, uh, who is also known as Pioli Fukon, Pioli Borfukon, Zeoram Dualia Borua were hanged in 1830. So these are important from prelims perspective, also from mains perspective. Students, please make a note of it. Then in 1833, Purandar Singh was reinstated by the British as a mere puppet in their hands 
However, he could not do anything without their permission. This left the elite section of the society frustrated as all their hopes were crushed. This turned them against the king and the British who were waiting for such an opportunity removed Purandar Singh on the grounds of being an incompetent ruler. So thus, after 1833, Assam passed into the hands of the British and besides modern day Assam, British also annexed Khamti, Singpo, Motok, Kosari, Naga, Garo, Lusai and other hilly kingdoms to the ever-growing British Empire. The people, however, did not benefit in any manner for the economic scenario did not improve. And the famous revolt of 1857 found an echo in Assam under under the leadership of Moniram Dewan and Pioli Borua, who were consequently hanged in 1858. So these dates are very important. And other leaders like Madhu Malik, Kamala Borua, Dutiram Borua, Marangi Khoa Gohai were banished from the states. And two others, that is Formud Ali and Bahadur Gaubura, were sent to the Andaman, that is Kalabani. So this is a past year APSC question APSC has asked regarding Bahadur Gaubura. So in mains, a short note was asked regarding Bahadur Gaubura. So a similar question may also, uh, may also be asked regarding the other freedom fighters of that time. So then Assam was put under a commissioner in 1859 and around that time farmers of Kulaguri Mongolo, it is Pathurugat, and Uttar Kamrup organized public meetings or mails, that is rice mails, where they sought to enlighten people about the reality of British rule. So in our next class, we will study about the various revolts of the uh, various peasant revolts of Assam, that is the Fulagori Dhawa, the Pathurugat uh, revolt, and the revolt in Uttar Kamrup. Agrarian revolts took place at Fulaguri, Pathurughat, Rongia, and various places of North Kamrup, protesting against imposing of excessive taxes. Now coming to the next chief commissioner's province, that is 1874 and 1905. So in 1874, the Assam region was separated from the Bengal presidency, but Silhet was added to Assam and the status was upgraded to a chief commissioner's province and the capital was at Shillong. The people of Silhet, however, protested the inclusion in Assam and Assamese, which was replaced by Bengali as the, as the official language in 1887, was reinstated alongside Bengali. So when uh, Silhet was introduced in Assam, so for temporarily, Bengali was made the official language of Assam However, under the leadership of prominent leaders like Andram Hekel Fukon and Gunabiram Borua, Assamese was reinstated as an official language. In 1889, oil was discovered at Big Boy, giving rise to an oil industry. So these factors were very important. At first, the tea industry was uh, established. And then by the 1889s, the oil industry was also established. In this period, Naga witnessed starvation deaths and there was a decrease in the indigenous population and which was then adequately compensated by the immigrant labor. So the immigration in Assam is continuing since the pre-independence era, British era. So colonialism was well developed and the tea, oil and coal industries were putting increasing pressure on the agricultural sector which was lagging behind. So due to, due to these uh, incidents, the peasants rose again in revolt. The protests culminated in a police charge against the protesters at Potorogat in 18, uh, 1894. In 1903, Assam Association was formed with Manik Chandra Borua as the 
first secretary. On the other hand, the British sought to clamp the linguistic freedom of the natives by introducing Bengali as the medium of instruction in 1837. So in 1837, the British established Bengali as the medium of instruction. However, with the help of the American Baptist min, uh, missionaries and the prominent personalities of the Assam, like Anandaram Dekyal Fukon, Hemsandra Burwa, Gunaviram Burwa, Assamese regained its place as the medium of instruction in 1873. And during those days, Calcutta was the place for higher learning. The Assamese students who pursued their higher studies there formed various cultural organizations which were aimed at regenerating Assamese culture and literature. So in 1884, Jagannath Burwa formed the first such organization and named it Sarbazanik Sava at Jorhat. The foundation of the organization is a landmark in the history of political associations in Assam. Then it was followed by the Assam Association formed by Manik Chandra Burwa. And the Assam Association was joined by noted freedom fighters of Assam like Nobin Chandra Bordloi, Torun Ram Pukon, Gopinath Bordloi, Rohini Kumar Hati Burwa, Vidyadhar Sarma, Sonarath Sarma, etc. And they, these personalities made the Assam Association a platform for their future political career. And later on, this particular association came to be recognized as the Assam branch of Indian National Congress in 1919. So the Assam Association in time became the Assam branch of the Indian National Congress in 1919. In 1916, Assam Satra Sanmilan, and in 1917, Assam Sahitya Sabha, it is formerly known as Sodo Assam Sahitya Sanmili, was formed. So these dates and the organization is important. In prelims, an MCQ based question may be asked by APSC. Students, please make a note of it. Now, from 1906 to 1912, Eastern Bengal and Assam under Lieutenant Governor. So Bengal was partitioned and East Bengal was added to the Chief Commissioner's province. Now the new region was ruled by a Lieutenant Governor and the capital was at Dhaka. This province had a 15 member legislative council in which Assam had two seats. The members for these seats were recommended and not elected by rotating groups of public bodies. The partition of Bengal was strongly uh, protested in Bengal and the people of Assam were not happy either. The partition was finally annulled by a royal decree in 1911. So we have covered these aspects in our Indian history classes. Then parallelly, the Swedish movement from 1905 to 1908 from this period went largely unfelt in Assam. However, it stirred some uh, personalities in Assam, for example, Ambagagri Rai Sodori. Students, you can mention in the comment section by which name Ambagagri Rai Sodori is also known as, because APSC might ask regarding this, you can mention the name in the comment section that by which other name Ambagagri Rai Sodori is known as also. So beginning 1905, peasants from East Bengal began settling down in the riverine tracks or the sour areas of the Brahmoter Valley. Encouraged by the colonial government to increase agricultural production and government had successful on that mission. So between 1905 and 1921, the immigrant population from the East Bengal increased four times and the immigration continued in post-colonial times, which gave rise to the Assam movement or Assam edition of 1979. So as I have said, many socio-political issues which are plaguing Assam right now have its ro roots in the modern Assam history itself. Now next comes the Assam Legislative Council period from 1912 to 1920, 
the administrative unit was reverted to a chief commissioner's province assam plus silhet with a legislative council added the council had 25 members of which the chief commissioner and 13 nominated members formed the bulk the other members were elected by local public bodies like municipalities local boards landlords tea planters and the muslim immigrants as assam got involved into the non cooperation movement the assam association slowly transformed itself into the assam pradesh congress committee with five seats in all india congress committee in 1920 21 so in 1920 1919 1920 like the rest of the country assam also jumped into the non cooperation movement launched by gandhi ji and fame and very prominent leaders like nobin chandra bodloy torun ram phukon sonarat sharma had to undergo imprisonment 1921 is a memorable year in the history of assam because of three things this is important from prelims perspective also in from mains 1921 gandhi ji visited assam strikes by assam bengal train service and streamer companies which were the cause of widespread unrest and after a period of 63 years that is in 1991 assam passed into the hands of a governor thus paving the way for a dual administration which lasted till 1936 so 1921 is a very significant year in the history of assam students please make a note of these points the 41st session of the indian national congress took place at pandu in 1926 it was presided over by shrinivas ayangar so these points are very important 41st session pandu in 1926 and the president was shrinivas ayangar now comes the period of diary from 1921 to 1937 so under the government of india act 1919 the assam legislative council membership was increased to 53 of which 33 were elected by special constituencies and the powers of the council were increased to but in effect the official group consisting of the europeans the nominated members etc had the most influence in 1930 civil disobedience was launched by gandhi and assam to took part into it prominent leaders like hemchandra borua bisnuram medhi omeo kumar das was were imprisoned also large there was a large number of women participated in the struggle then comes the assam legislative assembly period from 1937 to 1947 So in the elections held in 1937, although the Congress was able to secure the maximum number of seats, they were not able to get a majority. And we know under the Government of India Act 1935, the Council was expanded into an assembly of 108 members with even more powers. And this was the period which saw the rise of prominent leaders like Gopinath Bodloy and Mohammad Sadulla. and it saw their role in the uh, struggle for their power and influence the leader of the muslim league sir syed mohammad sadullah formed the first council of ministers after securing the approval of other parties however later on the congress came to power with its leader being gopinath bodloy but finally during the second world war bodloy ministry resigned and sadullah ministry came back to power in 1939 then in 1942 the quit india movement was launched and which was popularly known as the people's revolution this movement is historic because it was the last movement because before india gained independence and in assam leaders like jyotipohar agawala gopinath bodloy siddhinath sharma mohammad taibullah Kokordin Ali Ahmed, Bishnuram Medhi were the leaders of the Quitna Movement in Assam, and many of them were imprisoned. So there were many people 
who laid down their lives for the sake of freedom in assam the prominent among them uh, prominent among them are hogeshwari phukonni konoklota lakshminam hazurika phogiram khut boloram khut mukundar kakoti raota kosari madan brahman etc so finally in 1945 after the second after the end of the second world war the labor party headed by clement atlee came to power in britain and in 1946 Brit uh, cabinet mission sat in discussion with the political heads of assam sorry with the uh, political heads of india and decided on the transfer of power and finally india earned its independence on 15th august 1947 so with these students we come to an end to the first class of our assam history uh, modern assam history classes thank you for watching the video thank you